In today's day and age, data centers are also aiming to be more efficient for their enclosures. So today we're gonna to be testing a hot oil containment solution for air tightness. We're also gonna be stress testing it as well. We're here today to test the hot oil containment structure. We're testing 14.4 metre structure by 4.47 high internal and 1.35 wide internal. And we're here to test to a no greater leakage rate than 3%. We will be doing an air tightness leakage test at 7.5 pascal, so understanding how much this, this, this enclosure is leaking at 7.5 pascal, and which needs to be within the 3% loss of air that is required to what the, your customer has specified. The other thing we need to do is stress test this enclosure to ensure that it's safe at elevated pressures 10 times 7.5 pascal. So we have to stress test this at 75 pascal to ensure that it stays upright and, and all together. So what's some of the reasons why some of your customers are asking for hot oil containment? Well, obviously with data centers now with PUE, yeah. it's very big in the data center environment. Once upon a time you had racks facing racks, so you had yeah. a, a back door blowing onto a front door, very inefficient. Then we turned the racks around, so back door to back door. Yeah. Then we get the hot air blowing into the one aisle, then we want to remove that hot air so we don't have hot air mixing with yep. the cold air that's coming into the data hall. Yep. So to get rid of that hot air, obviously we have hot oil containment. Yep. So this structure here would be simply bringing a server rack in here, removing a, a panel, yep. lifting up the floor track, yep. sliding a server rack in, Yep. Front door here, bringing the cold air in, hot air here, extracting the hot air out. So keeping, uh, it, keeping that hot air that you're expelling from the back of the racks from mixing with what you're correct. injecting at the front. And getting it back to the hot air plenum, ceiling plenum, yep. and then running it back to your fan walls or your crack units with yep. your pressurised corridor or your fan wall, yep. back to the perimeters of the data hall. Okay. And then obviously sending that cold air back through again, back through the racks. Yep. Simple reticulation. So it's also extremely critical that the racks that are going in, that they're maintaining their spaces when there's servers and stuff that are missing. Oh, definitely. When your racks are in there, you need blank panels. Yeah. Between, if, if you haven't got a full complement of equipment in the rack, yeah. you don't want any return hot air going back through no. the rack and back through gaps that are in the front of the rack. So yeah. you, it's critical that you blank all that rack off down the sides yeah. and in each rack unit. Have you guys got a specially designed rack that you use for this sort of enclosure system or? Uh, we did design a rack a number of years ago where no. we, once upon a time you had a raised lid rack so your hot air went out the top. Yeah. Uh, that was when you had towers on shelves mainly rather than the pizza box servers now that take the cold air in and blow it straight out the back. Right. When you had towers blowing hot air in the rack, you had fans in the top of the yeah. rack and you took it out through a raised lid. Right. Very old technology. Yeah. So now we flip the lid, we make it as sealed as possible on yeah. top so there's no air pockets. Cool. So you have basically a box. Yeah. So there's no air pockets on the sides yeah. or at the top. So you want air as clean as possible to go through that rectangle in yeah. and out. Yeah. None of these pockets of air getting trapped on raised lids and cavities of metal brackets and so forth. So very critical you get the air in and get it out as efficiently as you can. And getting back to it, having all your brush blanks on the side, having all your panels in. So it's a box, one way only. Do you normally put these onto false floor systems or false floor is now? False floor is a thing of the past, we'll say. <laughs> now you're blowing the cold air into the data hall on a um, concrete slab and then you're getting your hot air out. But no, raised floor, once upon a time you would have grills here on a raised floor. Yeah. You'd have a 600 floor or a metre high floor, 1.2, yeah. whatever it might be. Yeah. Blowing your cold air under the floor, up yeah. here through the grills, through your racks into the hot oil. Yeah. Now you're just flooding this area with cold air. Yeah. Right? yeah. So coming down from your, you'll generally have your fan walls at the end, it'll blow down here and the, the racks will pick it up on the way through. I mean, one thing that I always notice with the false floor system is that over time, they just end up with huge penetrations into other parts of the building and a good lot of the air that you're pumping into the floor isn't actually making it to your racks. Yeah, that's right. That's called flat spots under your floor. All the analysis, sometimes you just can't get rid of that flat spot. Yeah. And there's infrastructure under the floor which doesn't help as well. You've got cable baskets, you've got, with comms, you've got power baskets, you've got other infrastructure under the floor. So much cleaner to do it above floor. How much development have you guys put into this system? A lot, a double track system for, so you can you can put racks in, you can double the panels up to slide them out of the way as you yep. put the racks in. Yeah, and uh, development above there so you don't have to stand on the racks to open those windows up uh, to get to the cable baskets here. You can simply get in the hot aisle, oh, yeah. open the windows up, reach yeah. through, work on your and services here. A lot of yeah. development on the sliding doors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great.